Okay. Uh, one of the things that I hated about church is always feeling confused at church, you know, like I don't mind feeling confused, you know, um, you know, in math class, you know, I don't mind, you know, because, you know, it, you know, it's mathematics and some of the smartest people, you know, struggle with math. But there was basic things in the church that just was extremely confusing, like why there were so many denominations, like why do we need this many denominations? And then we would we would fellowship with some of the denominations like you know, Church of God in Christ, Apostolic, you know, all these different, just to find out that they're all, like, they created their own church based off a few disagreements. Like, this church left this church because they didn't agree over baptism. This church left because they didn't agree over who can wear pants or who can't wear pants. And and, and this church left because, you know, they believe that women can lead and be and, and speak. And then this church does not believe that women can lead and speak. And then, and then this church left because they don't believe that we should play music in church. They believe that it's a sin to play music. And it just, it was just this thing where I was constantly confused. And I remember my grandfather stood on the pulpit. i never forget this. My grandfather said that someone at his job said that the Bible is missing pages. He was like, okay, but it has 66 books. That's enough for you. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget somebody saying what's enough for me you know, i'm a grown man i don't mind a doctor telling me what's enough for me okay you should not drink this much water you should not eat you know this much you know don't have too many of those you get diabetes whatever whatever but a pastor telling me what's enough for me in a book what's enough for me to read what's enough? you know they tell you that you're supposed to live off the entire bible and then they tell you that we don't do the old testament no more and what i've learned about pastors is that when something in the Old Testament fits their agenda, they use it. But the Old Testament even said it. But then when something in the Old Testament is crazy, like stoning your kids or, you know, burning your daughter if she is a prostitute, then they go, oh, we're not under that Old Testament law anymore. We're not under that. But then when they want to use tithes, you know, they'll they'll quote an Old Testament scripture to prove that tithes are a good thing and that they're historical. Pastors, they use the Old Testament when they want to, you know, push a conservative mindset. But when they want to say certain things like, oh, we're not under the old law anymore, they do that because they know that a lot of the things in the Old Testament are batshit crazy. And it just always felt like, you know, I, I always felt confused in the church. Always. It just was this it was this constant thing where I'm like, what? Wait, what? And like there were some times where I got it. You know, OK. But when we found out that there was missing books of the Bible, that there was missing chapters, missing pages. I I was so like, and I even asked my grandfather, I was like, do you know there there like there's a book of Moses? And he was like, mm hmm, but it don't add up with the scripture. It doesn't line up with the scripture. And I'm like, yeah, who decided that? Right. So a group of a group of men got together and decided to rip out chapters out of a book. And then they decided that this is what the rest of the world should live off on. So so they found the book and they decided and that doesn't fit our, you know, our, our, our motive. And they ripped that out and that doesn't line up with what, you know, okay. So they ripped that out. I think that religious leaders created the Bible. I think that people, mankind created the Bible. And I think that they didn't like some, some of the things that they saw. So they ripped it out. I mean, come on. If, if, you know, if, if I'm against something and I look in the Bible and I see that it's in there, that it's okay to do it, I'm gonna rip it out. It just, it, and, 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 and as time went by, that is what happened. I mean, there are so many missing books of the Bible, so many, you know, and then they'll tell you that they found it in the cave. Oh, they found one of one of the lost books of the Bible in a cave. This is like real stuff. And nobody cares that the Bible is missing pages like nobody cares. It's not like it's not seen as like a major thing. It's not seen as like it's not seen as like, you know, and, and those are things that confuse me. You know, I went to Bible study for 10 years straight, you know, at my grandfather's church. And I asked a lot of questions. I asked a lot of questions. You know, I, I remember my grandfather saying things that he he said was in the Bible and I would look in the Bible and they wouldn't be in the Bible. And my grandfather was a Bible scholar, but he would say certain things and I would look in the Bible and I wouldn't see him in the Bible like he said it. And I said, OK, OK, guys, this is how I this is why I believe that the Bible was written by man. OK, so first Corinthians six and nine. Right. We're going to look at the same scripture and we're going to see how it changes. So this is the word of God. Right. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters, 
uh, nor idolaters, nor men who submit or perform homosexual acts. So, right, okay, then you have, you see it changes, neither the sexually moral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers. So then it changes again. You see that they, they have it altered again. Now it's men who practice homosexuality, right? Because my grandfather believes you can practice it. He, is, he doesn't believe that you're born gay. He believes you, you're practicing it, right? So let's, okay, let's look at how it changes again. Then you see uh, uh, it says, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy. So then they make it very, very specific. In, in, in this version, they make it very specific. You know, it's not just about practicing it, whatever, whatever. Now we're just saying, you know, straight out, if you're a man, having sex with a man. So notice how it changes in this one as well, right? And the reason why it changes is because some people say that homosexuality is it means pedof pedophiles, but that's not true. The Bible would have just said pedophiles if it meant pedophiles. No, they're talking about gay people. The Bible is anti-gay. It is against gay people. It is against gay and trans people. And people don't want to believe that. But notice how the scripture changes and it does not it's not an exact copy of the last two scriptures that we just read, right? But this is the same exact verse. This is first Corinthians six, nine to ten. You know? Let's look at one more. Uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers. This one is different because it adds effeminate. Now they hate men who, who are a little feminine. So so at first it was just men who don't like, you know, uh, men who are uh, homosexual, men who don't like women, but they're homosexual, right? Now even if you're a little feminine, so even if you're not gay, but you're feminine, you're still going to burn in hell. A man wrote this, guys. I think that men wrote the Bible. I think that this is made up. I really do. And, and Christianity was my religion. It was my, I was a Christian. So I, I can criticize my religion. This is the religion that I was born under. I was, I was basically forced. I was basically forced to believe this. I mean, my grandparents told us when we were kids, you know, Jesus died for you, right? And I'm like, yeah, cause I'm a kid. I mean, you, you want that acceptance. You want to, you want you know, you want to feel like you're, you don't want to be a bad person. Like you don't want to feel like a bad person in your family. So when your family asks you, do you know Jesus died for you? And you're a little kid. You just say, yeah, because it seems like that's what they want you to say. You know, um, then you believe it. Then you grow up believing it. You know, after they tell you it so many times, you believe it. OK, yeah, Jesus did die for me. You know, a, a man was killed on a cross for me. And I no longer believe that at all. I don't believe that there's any evidence for Jesus. I believe that the Bible was created and invented by men to control people, to control the world. And I think that they know it. I think that they know it. I just I don't I just I don't think the sheep know it. And when I say sheep, I mean people who are easily fooled, people who need religion to help them through their day, people who need religion because they need an explanation. They need to know things. They need to know why we have this. We have that. But yeah, that's that's one of the things that I hated about church was always feeling confused. Always. <laughs> And this is just one more thing that I want to say. You know, when you look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, I mean, it's clear that the Bible is anti-gay. It's clear that the Bible is, you know, anti-LGBT. But there are a lot of Christians that still uh, believe in the Bible. I would never tell somebody that they could not practice Christianity. I don't practice it. But this is my thing. I, you know, I have family members that are Christian. I have, you know, you know I, I have loved ones that are Christian. You know, both of my boyfriends were Christian. And I dated them, you know, knowing that they were Christian and they knew I was an atheist. But this is my thing, guys. You cannot say that the Bible is not anti-gay when you see these passages. It, it is. The Bible is against the gay community. And this is why people are homophobic, because they can use the scriptures to prove that it's wrong. Oh, I don't hate you because you're feminine. The Bible just says that it's wrong. So I don't tolerate it. Do you see how that sounds? Do you see how that could cause someone to think that they were right for being homophobic or, or for discriminating, you know, against someone because they were effeminate or gay?